morning. And welcome to McCampbell United Methodist Church. Merry Christmas to everyone. Uh, I don't see any announcements. Does anyone have an announcement? There's, looks like there's an announcement in the back. Okay. During the past few weeks, uh, we have been collecting for staff gifts for our salaried people in our church, our pastor, our music directors, and our secretary. And I have here the uh, uh, gifts that were collected and distributed. The staff parish committee uh, has been responsible for this. So, Pastor Jeff. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Christina Beauregard. I am been asked to remind you that there is service tonight at 730 and we look forward to seeing you all there. Any other announcements? Then we invite the Benjamins up. When the angel Gabriel visited Mary, announcing God's plan for her to conceive and give birth to the Messiah, Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? And yet, only a few months later, Mary sings to Elizabeth, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. <laughs> for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. We, like Mary, hear God's call to the part of making God's dream for our salvation and flourishing a reality, and we question, how can this be? I am only yet, like Mary, the only that make us hesitate our gifts God can and will use as God's love transforms us into bearers of good news. Marked by mutual love and peace that flows from the flourishing of all people. We light these candles as signs of our shocking hope, our just peace, our fierce joy, and the love that transforms us. May love grow within us, transforming us into bold witnesses of God's salvation with our voices and our lives. Amen. Amen. good for me.
please join me in the opening prayer. Dear God, troubled and confused in a confusing, troubled world, we try to make sense of the conflicting voices. We search to find one word that would make sense and give meaning to the rest. Come near, Lord. Touch our hearts and souls and fold your life around us, speaking that one cleansing, unifying word. Express yourself to us, in us, through us. In the name of Jesus, child, amen. And now it's time for the youth disciples. Yes. Come on now, young disciples. Good morning. How are you? Good. That's just good. Are you excited? Why? All the busyness and planning and all the stuff and getting ready. And Santa making his list out, checking who's naughty at night. Huh. And now it's Christmas Eve. Do you, you know, we've been shopping and running around and on the radio. I did all these Christmas carols and we're going to sing a bunch of them today. What's your favorite one? Do you have a favorite song? Huh? Carol of the Bell. Sign them up. Anybody else have a favorite carol? Yeah. Jingle bells. That's a good one, isn't it? Anybody else? Anybody like one special song? No? Joy to the World. You like that one? Joy to the World. All oh, happy and filled. Today we're talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus. But we're going to sing songs, and then tonight, when you all come back and bring a whole bunch more people, then we're going to be talking about her some more. But there's, Mary got visited by an angel, and the angel said what? You remember? You're going to have a little baby, Mary, right? And the baby's going to be Jesus, the Savior of the world. Wow, isn't that a something? She was so excited that she got up and she ran to her cousin Elizabeth's house, Telling the good news. And you know what she did? She broke out in song. And she was singing a song. We call it Mary's song. It's the Magnificat, they call it. But it's Mary's song. And she said, I am so blessed. All generations will remember me as giving birth to the Savior. Isn't that a wonderful song? Mary's song is so excited. We need to have that excitement because Jesus is being born and we remember that today and tonight, right? Huh? We lit a candle today. You know what candle it was? What one? What was it? The candle of what? We did hope, peace, and joy. What do you think this one was? Heart. Love. Love? Very good. Come on down. <laughs> you get candy. Love. Yeah. The candle of love. And we're reminded that God loved us so much and loved us so much that he gave his only son, Jesus, so that we could have not just eternal life, but a great life now and a merry Christmas. Isn't that awesome? As we celebrate the birth of that love that God sent down. That's awesome. And we share with family Mary's song and the love of God. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your precious gift at Christmas and for these precious young disciples, Lord. Bless them, bless us all, Lord, and safe travels and, and happy gatherings, Lord, and may we remember your love this Christmas. In Jesus' name, amen. And there are kids in name, and you are excused. So we're going to keep the faithful. You can have candy and candy cane if you'd like. Those are jolly ranchers. You get one. Why do you guys give me candy? Is he mommy? <laughs> <laughs>
we are so blessed, the precious children, huh? They just bring that joy and that excitement of Christmas um, into our celebrations and remind us of the love of God for us, that we need to be like children and come to God and celebrate. For your celebrations to be together. Um, as we gather, we take a few moments to to pray together this morning, as we do, and for one another and for the concerns on our hearts. Um, we pray and we greet each and every one who's joining us online this morning. Um, Elder and Carl Morse, Jean and, and Lucy G, and thank you, Lucy, for the baked goods this morning, for my Christmas morning surprise. And um, George Stott, any others, Harold Stott, those who are joining us from home, um, we keep you in our prayers, and, and we're grateful for your, for your attendance with us and your faithfulness as well. Are there any others that I've overlooked? Um, I know Muff O'Hare, you're another one at home. Um, if there's anybody you'd like to lift up or any prayer concerns, would you do so now, please? Any concerns, Joyce? The Schultz family. We lift the Schultz family in prayer this morning. Um, Dakota is safely back with us. I think she's in the Sunday school, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, Colleen O'Brien asking for Max for throat cancer and prayers and support and healing for him. Um, Riley's traveling to be with us. We'll be here Tuesday. We pray safe travels for Riley. Um, but let's take some time to just be together then in prayer this morning. And I know that there are many unspoken prayers this morning. And um, just take a deep breath from the craziness and the preparations. And I know we still have a lot to do, many of you. And um, but just experience the peace, the joy, the hope, and the love of Christmas as we pray together.
God of bright and shining stars, we come this morning with the thoughts and the memories of the old, old story in our hearts. For many here, this story has been heard numerous times, flooding their lives with warmth and love. For others, the story is new, surprising, causing wonder and surprise. All around us are symbols and reminders of the miraculous birth. We see the greens and the poinsettias and remind us of your eternal presence and, and your love for us. The candles shed their glowing light, helping us to, to remember the many ways in which you brightened our lives and have shined light into dark times, Lord, offered light on our journey. The colors, the music, the aromas, the people, Invite us again into your wonderful presence, your presence in the world, in the birth of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. In this world in which your holy land is in such turmoil, O oh God, shed your light anew, that your healing love may bring peace and hope to people in conflict. We ask that your, you protect all those who are in harm's way, all those who live lives of anguish, poverty, oppression. We ask your loving presence to be with those who refuse to believe in you, who see your word through the church as a tradition, but see very little impact in their daily lives. Let the light of Jesus Christ penetrate that darkness of alienation and bring hope and peace to all your people. May your healing holy presence shine in the lives of those that we have named for you and in the lives of those that we have named in our hearts. Be with all of them and with us in our joys and in our concerns as well as in our sorrow. May the light of the star which sparkled in those dark skies again illuminate our lives, guiding, healing, leading us to you, to you, blessed Lord. As we gather in this time and place to hear the story of the birth, remind us again that you are born continually in our lives, in gratitude, we offer our praise and our love to you as we pray together the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, today we're in for a lot of scripture and a lot of singing. Isaiah. Chapter 7, and I was told 14. Your new moon feast and your appointed festivals I hate with all my being. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. That's right, Isaiah. Maybe I was in the wrong chapter. Sorry, I was in chapter 1. Sorry, that was my fault. Oh. Okay. Therefore, the Lord Himself 
will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. Hooray. Here we go, a little town of Bethlehem. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin named was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God, and you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, the Lord God, and will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary says, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the Holy One will be born and will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who has said to have been unable to conceive in her sixth, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Chapter 1, 18 through 23. 
This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But before he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive, give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Luke 2, 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree to the census that a census should be taken in the entire world. This was the first census that had been taken while, okay, here we go, Quinus was governor of Syria, and then, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to, Ju to Judea to Bethlehem, the town in, of, the, of David, because he belonged to the house and the lineage of David. He went there to register with Mary, who he was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to their firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger because there was no guest rooms available for them. shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. 
suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to the God in highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the, he the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see the things that have been happened, which the Lord has told to us. So they hurried off and Mary, to Mar find Mary and Joseph and the baby was lying in the manger. And they, when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about the child. And all they had heard, it was amazing and at what the shepherds had said to them. Matthew 2, 1 through 2, and 2, 7 through 11. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked where the king, the one who had been born king to the Jews, we see his star when it was rose and have come to worship him. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. They came to the house. They saw the child with the mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure and presented them with the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh.
seated. It's just nice on Christmas Eve to be able to be together, as I said, but just to sing some of the carols together, isn't it? Just to, uh, to spend some time and focus our minds and our hearts and take a deep breath and prepare for, for this special night. And I hope to see you all and pray God fill this place with people to, to just to celebrate the birth of Christ together. The wise men give us a great example as we prepare for our offering to bring our gifts before God. And on this Christmas Eve, we take a few moments to reflect on the goodness of God, the generosity of God, how good God has been to us, not just in the birth of Jesus, but in so many ways, the times we prayed and God has seen us through and the way God has provided for us, uh, just amazing generosity. Let's take a few moments to just reflect on God's goodness. Dear God, we cannot thank you enough for the gift of your Son. Through your grace, you have given us everything, including our lives. On this Christmas Eve, we celebrate the miracle of Christmas. But when the candles are blown out, when the ringing of the bells has ceased, when all have gone home and on their way for the day, May we continue to shine your light into the world through the giving of these offerings. And so we offer you yet another gift, our partnership to build your reign, your kingdom here on earth. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. And now as you go out, carry the peace, the hope, the love, and the joy that this special season offers to us. Go and share the love of Christ with all you meet. And I wish you a Merry Christmas. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>